Barry, you might know this better than me, actually. But I'm looking to just have the conversation and hopefully um, enjoy it for what it is and then kind of take it from there. How does that sound? Sure. Yeah, I've never done live, so I, I don't okay. have anything to Okay, so again, I, like I said, I'm hopeful that Heshi will join us. In the meantime, it looks like we are happening. All right, so I'll begin, if that's okay. All right, Perfect. so hey, my name is, I am Naftali Hoff. My company is Impactful Coaching and Consulting. We do leadership and executive coaching, as well as educational coaching for school leaders and teachers. I joined this call because, well, first of all, I scheduled it, so I better show up. And I joined it because I want to connect with purposeful, driven professionals who want to understand the benefit and the power of a mastermind and the effects of Corona on my business have been very interesting, initially quite significant, uh, but only for a limited period of time. And uh, since the first couple of weeks, things uh, rebounded pretty quickly. And I would say in many ways, I'm in a better spot, you know, financially in terms of where my business is than I was even beforehand. That doesn't mean I'm out of the woods. I'm going into a season now, which typically has been historically a challenging time for me um, because summertime, a lot of my clients are away or kind of like not doing the bulk of their work. So one of the things I want to be working on, and I'm going to talk about a, a, um, a document I shared with you this morning. Hopefully you've had a chance to access it and download it and even look at it. That would be ideal. But if not, we'll kind of do it in the moment. Uh, I want to use this as a way by which I can scale up my own work specifically over Q3, which is, like I said, historically been a weak one for me to amplify and really hit the ground running, enjoy like very much sustained success throughout and then enter enter Q4 on the top of my game. Cool. Sid? Sure. Uh, hi, my name is Sid Vaidya and I'm also the founder of Switch Events. It's an event uh, hosting platform. We uh, host various different type of networking events and so forth. And, uh, you know, prior to COVID, of course, they were all in-person networking events. We do morning events. We do lunch and learns. We'll do happy hours and things of that nature. But then, of course, with the COVID, uh, we moved over immediately into virtual events. And I've actually been on various other different programs talking about it because about a week into the government calling this a pandemic, I was already running virtual events. And so I immediately yeah, moved into this direction. However, with that said, you know, uh, nothing is like an in-person event, of course. So you have to understand the end users feel, you have to get a grasp on what they're looking for. And it's all a test case at the end of the day, because then, then it just improves. And, you know, uh, in months I've hosted now, we're talking north of, uh, uh, 25 events uh, virtually. And wow. so it's just given me the opportunity to uh, get a grasp on what is it that we're looking for, what people are after. And uh, I could say I've done a ton of virtual events at this point. <laughs> so if anyone's looking for a learning curve on that, I'm happy to help them out. Awesome. And I do see, by the way, that the, the, the prompts did finally populate in the chat. So you could use that to guide you. Uh, Barry, I want to get to you in just a second, but Sid, since you're already talking, I thought I would mention that I also took advantage of um, the pandemic to do a lot that I typically do in person online, specifically as it relates to webinars, whether that's leadership or teacher training or some combination thereof. And the beauty I found of the pandemic is it allowed many more people were getting comfortable with going online. So it created a new platform for folks, but it also allowed me to reach out to people that historically I've not had access to. Um, so I thought there were a lot of benefits there. Heshi, welcome. It's, it's nice to see you. How are you? Uh, so I, just wanted you to see, I just wanted you to see in the chat, the, kind of like the introductory text we're, got, you, we're using. It's, it's not so formal, but I thought it would be a springboard for folks. And so, um, Barry, if it's okay with you, I'd love to... Uh, to hear hear back i know we've done this once before um i don't i don't see your camera moving so i'm not sure if we've lost you so uh tell oh, me. you don't i'm here you don't see me do you hear me i hear you clearly uh, yeah go ahead okay. but you're not seeing me i i do see I didn't you. there is more movement there is more movement <laughs> so i am barry ackerman thank you very much for uh, putting this event together Naftali. i am we are in supportive and outsourced HR 
firm. We provide HR consulting services a wide range of areas, both clients as well as strategic productivity angles. Uh, take care of a lot of the things that the large companies, what have an internal HR department, handle. Uh, the small companies don't have and don't need a full-time HR department, but they can certainly benefit from a lot of the HR services. Uh, so that's what I provide to those companies. I joined because I'm excited about the mastermind model, and I'm excited to uh, join a project, a program that's being run by, by you, Naftali. Um, I know you you run excellent programs. You have a lot of value to share, um, and I believe that the uh, the mastermind model is the model. Um, a lot of people really gain from so I'm excited about that. Very kind, Barry. Thank you so much. Do you want to address the last piece as well, or leave it alone? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not seeing the chat. I'm on my phone. I'm not on my laptop. Oh, no worries. Just the effect of COVID on your business. Um, the effect of COVID is, is um, it's interesting. Uh, I've gotten a lot of people reaching out, but it's mostly on the, the unfortunately, on the layoff side of things, whether it's employers help, needing help with how to lay off people if they need to do that, or, or employees or former employees calling me with unemployment questions, which is not really the area of HR that most HR professionals or employment lawyers um, I mean, terminations are part of running a business, but this is obviously very, very different. So I have people just to navigate some some of those some of those things. And now I'm actually very excited helping the companies that are uh, starting to ramp up again as as people are starting to open up. Uh, so that's been very exciting. Yeah, that's nice. I was actually going to ask you that question if you're seeing an uptick uh, with your with your clients. So that's fantastic. Really great news. Really great news. All right, Heshi, the floor is yours. You seem to be the master of this kind of platform anyway. So uh, you probably know exactly what to do here. I would love to hear a little bit about you. Tell us, uh, you know, what what it is that you do. And um, by the way, I did tag Heshi this morning um, on Thanks. a LinkedIn post uh, regarding people who are really doing some good work in the space of web design, um, branding, marketing, selling, so definitely go over and give uh, he Heshi a big hug uh, on LinkedIn. And if you know any other professionals that you think deserve some attention as well, please, by all means, tag them. I want to ensure that they're getting, you know, the, the spotlight shown on them so that they can buy their business. All right. Naftali, thank you for that introduction and thank you for that tag this morning. I saw it like 10 minutes before logging on and just replied back to there. So, um, okay. So I, what I do is I have a company called Radio Creations. Uh, it's been around since 2002. Been here a long. I've been doing this a long time. We started off as a web development company, you know, designing websites, getting them up and running. In the early days, it was just websites. Now we're more kind of uh, our idea is web strategy, trying to understand what it is that your a company or organization is trying to uh, accomplish with their website and making it smart for them, making it have all the information that's available for their uh, clients or potential clients. Giving, giving a message out that's going to be smart and, and having all these that are going to be there that are relevant. So it's more strategy and getting up getting the, the, the side up and running. And, and for now, this is like the sphere today is all virtual now, especially after what just happened with Corona. Yeah. We see that uh, the physical real estate and, and, then, and then after we had that, that the, all, the, all the, the riots and everything, the, the value right now is the virtual space. And that's where and that's what we're trying to help with is companies really maximize their virtual space, especially in a post corona world where this is so important. I hear that. So so Heshi, I'm, I'm very curious. Give me an example, because I think all of us would, would benefit from hearing a little bit more about the storytelling and adding value through kind of unpacking. I'm just I, I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing your, your mouth moving still on the video. So I wasn't sure if you were yeah. muted or if it's just a, a lag. I think it's a lag. I see myself in real time here. Okay, I see good. you in real time too. Okay, but I saw the fine. same thing happen with Gary Ackerman. He was talking, and it was like ten or twenty seconds behind. So I'm assuming it's the same issue. Maybe it's a technical issue with restream. Maybe, maybe. And I can't, I can't speak. Sid, I did, by the way, get your text. So I'll take a look at that. And I do have a Streamyard account, but I didn't know that I'd be able to do multiple people. That was really my objective here in this call. So please forgive any technical, technological limitations we're doing the best we can thing is that we're talking so Hesh, i want you to by the way you could, you, could use, you could use multiple people in Streamyard. i've done it and it's, it's it you know it works okay, okay. it probably can i haven't i haven't gotten to the version yet so um i'm just being honest where i'm holding with you know the whole linkedin live piece and my my level of investment 
Anyway, I am curious, Hesh, if you could unpack that a little bit more specific to the mm -hmm. question of how you help people, how you help people tell their story. Okay. So that, that's a great question. And really that relates to some of the, the things that we're doing now more than we're doing ever before, which is, you know, like I'm going to give a shout out to, to Label Schwartz. Okay. Because a lot of the sites that I'm doing lately, he's a very big part of the equation because it's telling a story with real people, a real personality, real, you know, it, it's not just generic stock photo. It's people want to connect to the same way on LinkedIn. People want to connect to you as a person. They want to see your person. They want to see what you're about. They want to hear your story. They don't want to see generic things. They don't want to see generic pictures. They don't want to see generic content. So like when it comes to photography, one of the things I'm doing on more than 50% of the sites now is I'm arranging to get a photographer to get those pictures in professionally because we want to tell a story. Same thing with content, not just generic, a generic template and stuffing in text that doesn't really that was just not, you know, haphazard, but having a real objectively, you know, an objective to the content where it's thought out and, and, and where people it can really like, not just having a bunch of text, but like breaking it up into sections that are readable, that people can process and get the message out. The idea is to get the message out to your audience. And that's really what we're changing now more so than that. We've always been doing that approach, but it's more than ever now because the sites have to now tell a story and it capture people's attention as opposed to before when it was just, okay, you need a website to have a website. Now it's much more, you need a website to help you run your business. And it has to really be speaking in terms of telling a story and explaining who you are and what you do and getting that message out to your audience. Yeah, that's awesome. I know Sid is doing some of that with his podcast, which I had the pleasure of guesting on um, as well. So uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of focus now, <clears throat> sorry, on telling stories and leveraging online presence and things like that. Um, and uh, I thought if I could, first of all, two things. Number one, it would not be a mastermind without a hot seat. So I just wanted to give everybody a sense of what that is and um, explore the group to see if anybody would be willing to volunteer to be the occupant. Um, a hot seat is, and Barry, you've done this with me once before. So with your permission, I'm going to see if the other two gentlemen want to give it a go first, but I guess we'll see. Um, a hot seat is where you bring a particular question or challenge that you're experiencing, typically professional in this type of environment, whether it's a, a marketing, a branding type of thing, uh, sales related, uh, you're not sure if you should be scaling up personnel wise, for example, something like this, or you're having a hard time figuring out, should you be investing in a particular direction, not knowing the, the direction of the market and the economy? Jeez, I'm sort of like putting some ideas out there. And then you become, you know, the person who asks the question. We then reflect back to you for um, questions, observations, things like that. And if you want to clarify further, you go ahead and do so. And then the outcome is that you have at least one meaningful takeaway from the group that is um, that's advancing you and kind of like moving the needle in your business. So I, I don't want you to feel like you have to chase it. You know, you have to kind of compete with each other. Uh, but if either of you feel comfortable enough recognizing again that this is live so that we have um, potentially other people who are watching and listening in as well, uh, are either of you comfortable with pursuing that? And um, if so, I want to make sure that we leave time for that. I'm, I'm in. If you guys, if I, I have a whole slew of questions, I can always bounce. I love think boards, so that's great. Okay. Um, Eshi, would you want that opportunity as well? I guess it can't hurt. Let me, I, I'd rather be the second person to Fine. do it so I can. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you the way that I'm going to plan it in my mind. Then I want to be good on everybody's time. And that is that if we can um, plan, let's do the hot seat actually now, if that's okay. Because in the event that Heshi does decide to do it, we'll have time for him. In the interim, you should also please put that PDF that I texted to you earlier today through LinkedIn messaging. I would encourage you to look at the questions as we're speaking. And this way um, you could be thinking, this is a great exercise to do whether we do this together or not. Um, Cause I think it's gonna help you really think about Q3 in a more more developed way personally and professionally. And it's gonna help us, um, you know, hopefully grow. So we'll start with Sid. And if, if Heshi wants to go, we'll, be, we'll leave the PDF completely. Um, if Heshi decides not to, we'll have time for the PDF. Does that work? Perfect. Okay, so Sid, the floor is yours. I'm going to give you up to five minutes to unpack the issue. 
without interruption. Everybody else will be listening, taking notes, really trying to understand where you're coming from. And then we'll have to ask you for clarification, et cetera. Yeah, sure. So basically what you were saying with the hot seat, that's kind of my, my opportunity. That's awesome. So look, uh, today's kind of piece that I want to talk about and maybe, you know, get everyone's opinion on is the thought that, you know, with a virtual kind of movement, uh, again, maybe Heshi, you were, I don't know if you uh, were part of my introduction, but I uh, founded a networking platform. Um, and basically we were doing in-person networking events. And then of course, with the virtual, we moved over to online. And uh, though it's actually moved significantly to uh, like, you know, a significant scaling opportunity, but I'm also noticing that that feel that in-person versus external or the virtual, it's not there. So so the thing I want to kind of bounce off of you folks in general, everyone here, uh, that, you know, taking that next level approach and now planning out with the economy opening back up, people are getting back in action. Should the concept of virtual networking still be something to consider? Now, for me as an individual, I've hosted now in the last, like I said, three months, more than 20 events. And so for me, virtual has been been a big positive where I get the opportunity to get a larger scale audience versus just New Jersey or New York or whatever. Same time, is the audience still willing to go through the whole process and things of that nature? <clears throat> and so, you know, my challenge that I'm faced with and that I'm trying to get a better understanding of is that should I kind of keep the scalability factor going with virtual? Or should I consider scaling it to a, a lower amount to get the in-person back up? And that's been um, kind of like a bouncing challenge with me because one, that the world is opening back up. But then two, we have the factor that there's a second wave potentially coming. And that's something right. to also keep in mind for me. So I, I wanted to just talk about that. If I may, Sid, you, you actually have a great person on this call. I mean, Barry's great too, and hopefully I can add something. But Heshi is a, um, a real networker as well and uh, has his own networking events. So I think awesome. I think you have some real expertise on the call. And uh, gentlemen, the floor is yours, whoever wants to chime in first. Okay, I guess, I guess I'll take it then. Um, that's a great question, which we grappled with the same exact thing because we have, we, I have a monthly networking group with local people, local businessmen, and we um, and we, we 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 have like a very good core group of repeat people who know each other well. And now that we had to go online the last three sessions, uh, we've gotten a whole new crop of people from all over the country. We've got some people from Canada, and they're now interacting with other members of our group and, and doing it together. So there's definitely that advantage. Uh, on the other hand, people are saying, well, they want to, their, their business model is local people. They're dealing with, they want to only, you know, a, a person who services only, only the local, local businesses, he doesn't need to connect to somebody in Toronto. It's not going to help him. So you have both. So what we decided is that we're going to, we're going to, when we get back to, to a normal post Corona, you know, in-person networking events again, um, what we're going to do is we're going to try to keep both tracks so that some people can will always have the regular in-person meetings, which are always the in-person is you can't you can't get better than that. But we're gonna still keep a virtual track for those new people to interact with the existing core group. Every two, three months, let's say we're gonna have a virtual track as well. And that seemed to get the best of both worlds. No, that's that's real interesting. See, so you know, when I started Switch, I only considered it as a networking event and that was it. And then when I jumped into virtual, I got into the opportunity of doing career fairs, college mm -hmm. fairs, all sorts of other things. And so now the fear factor in my mind is like, how can I, yes, the, the networking events, I'll move over to in person and I'll continue to do some virtual. But then what do I do with this a whole different segment that I've created? And it's such a mental challenge because... Right. You know, you, you've built something during a three-month window, and then it's like, should I just let it collapse on its own? You know? Right, right, right. And, and that's exactly what we had, the same question I had. Like, oh, you're mute. I can't hear you anymore. I, I think you have the same time lag issue with the video. So I think he's finished talking, but he probably already oh, okay. all that. 
Yeah. <laughs> Pretty funny. Okay, I think he's still talking to me. And, and, and <laughs> sorry, I, think I know it's the same thing I experienced earlier. Okay, so so <laughs> I wait till I I feel like I'm interrupting him. <laughs> no, 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 just keep talking. You're good. You're good. Okay. So so that that I, I, to stop that group, I just feel also like even though we have our core group and a lot of people want to keep it local, you know, let's still keep that other group alive and 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 under the hood. Meaning that's not going to be our primary focus, but those people could interact with our, our main group. And all those people who don't have the need to interact with a, a larger scale uh, networking group that, you know, from, you know, more global, um, those people won't have to go on to the, the virtual event. That won't be for them. They're going to just benefit from the local event. So mm -hmm. I don't want to, we built up, we, we expanded our, our, our email list, like, uh, you know, more than 25 percent in the last three months with oh, yeah. the online people that they, that sign up that but but they're not you know they're not the core group those new people but we want we don't want to lose them either let them see what's going on let them interact and 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 let's not lose everything we built up in the last three months and if i may i, th I think yeah i was going to say something alongside what Heshi was talking about kind of leveraging what you've built and at the same time going back to your core um you also have to recognize bandwidth is right so i don't know how much time you have to do all these things if you've got you know unlimited capacity why not do everything on the other hand we are all limited and we have to be able to prioritize so we have to identify what is our core and what's going to help us and, and and i would say beyond that you know there's the altruistic element in what you're doing and then there's the business development i we could call it selfish but let's call it business development side of it right so for heshi's purposes you know he's creating a networking business, I mean, networking opportunity and platform. You know, there may be some monetization possible. I'm not quite sure what the model is fully because I've only joined one and it was virtual. Um, mm -hmm. But but eventually I would think, you know, Heshi's goal minimally is to make more people aware of his work so that he can have more people signing up for website creation and other things that he does. So, you know, you don't want to lose all of these people that you've brought in. You just don't necessarily have to touch base with them as frequently. It's almost like the educator in me, you know, when we talk about retention. So oftentimes we think that before a test, we'll cram and we'll remember everything that's the best way to study. But in fact, that's the worst way. The best way to do it is to study intensely upfront and then just to have little, let's call it memory triggers ongoing, sort of like quick reviews and things like that. And it stays top of mind. So you've done the heavy lifting on the front end, right? You've got the you, you've built the gravitas, you built the platform, the network, all of that. Now people are in. So you don't necessarily have to give them as much for them to stay in. You just have mm -hmm. to stay top of mind and give them continued value. And I think you should be able, obviously not judging what your exact uh, bandwidth is, but you should be able to maintain both on a schedule that ultimately serves you and your and your network. Right. Yeah. Just add to that, like I had, you know, and my business is not necessarily you know, only limited to my neck of the woods. That is my strongest area. But like a guy in Toronto could benefit from our services because we're virtual. It's 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 a, it's a, we can we can meet on Zoom. We can we can do everything remotely. And if they value our service, it doesn't make a difference. So I I do benefit from the the larger scale networking events as well. Uh, although the focus is more the, the primary group. So. Like to me, the, the the value of the networking is that I get more people from different aspects that I can show my message to, and just like Natalie was saying. Yeah, I, I would jump in if, if I may. Please. Yeah, um, I, I would echo that as well. That I, I think the workplace in general has seen a you know a fast forward ten years in the last three months uh, that have companies that have been very hesitant to allow a work from home model have seen that it can actually work. They may not like it still, but they've been forced into it. And now they saw that it's maybe not as bad as they thought. But sort of the 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 follow from that is that my, empl my employees don't have to live within a 10 or 20 or 30 mile radius of my office. They can live within a 10,000 mile radius. They can live anywhere on this planet. And um, so that opens up my, my talent pool. It also opens up my vendor pool, to your point, Heshi. You can have clients in Toronto. You can have a client in North Dakota. You can have a client in Mexico. You wouldn't have had right. those clients with your local Rockland County meetup. Um, mm. Which is not to say that there isn't tremendous value in a 
in-person live meetup. There certainly is. But I think that if someone would uh, say now that Corona is sort of going away and we're getting back to in-person events, I think it's not wise to leave that by the wayside. I think it's better to double down on that because the world is getting much smaller. You know, it's been getting smaller for years and it got a lot smaller in the last and I think the more people can open up those networks and realize that we can work with people across the country and even across the world very easily, um, I think there's a lot of value in those kind of events. People are going to get more comfortable with them. The both the platforms will improve, and the hosts said, uh, you know, we'll, we'll work out the kinks. And I've never been to your event. I'm sure there are no kinks. I don't. I don't mean that in that way. But you know, as the platforms evolve, right? We've seen LinkedIn is not what you know what it is today. Is not what it was a year ago or five years ago or 10 years ago. Um, so all these things, uh, I think it's it's better to just double down on that. Again, not to leave anything by the wayside, but capitalize right. on the opportunities coming up. Right. Yeah, awesome. you, you were you. saying, go ahead, sorry. No, I said, thank you, thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Right, Barry, you were saying that uh, now that, the, the, that, that, let's say business owners have come to grapple with the idea of people working remotely, I think there's a new reality that as much as uh, everybody is going to stick to the, the post-corona world, even when things get back to normal, there's a new normal. And that's part of the new normal is that there's going to be more acceptability, I think, to remote meetings and remote working more so than ever before. And and I think we're, we're seeing a new normal here. And I think virtual events like this, you know, and virtual networking is going to still have a much greater role post-corona. Even when things go back to normal, we're still going to see more of this as well. If I may, I wanted to piggyback on one thing Barry said and then add another piece as well. Maybe that's a sort of a takeoff on Heshi's last point. And then Sid, by the way, we need to hear back from you as to whether or not we effectively addressed your point. And what I also want to hear from you is practically speaking, based on the feedback that you've gotten, what's an action step, minimally one, that you plan to take, either either it's just a matter of, of sort of hunkering down on your current model and, and, and just doubling down on that, or maybe taking action in a particular way as far as scheduling and mapping out, you know, your capacity moving forward. So think about that, please, for a moment. Um, you know, to Barry's point, you know, if you, for example, were to scale back on frequency because you're trying to do both virtual and in-person, you know, I would think about the idea of how do I add more value to the events I've already created so that even if I don't have to do them as often, or even if I can't do them as often, at least they're more memorable than ever and people really value them that much more. So for example, since we talked about the evolving technology, you know, with Zoom, for example, as you know, you could do a breakout room. And has she tried to do that in the last call? It just didn't work out, but I did it with a mastermind group that, I, that I'm running currently, a different group. And um, I had everybody pair up in a breakout and in theory we could be doing the same thing here if we use a platform that supports it i'm not sure that restream does but um and and we would break up and let's just say for example use this pdf and work on a worksheet together or work on in that case we were doing feedback scenarios right how do you give feedback more effectively how do you become more empathic how do you you know understand another person's perspective these kinds of things and so you could have a virtual event but still create opportunity for people to talk to each other in a way that they could never do via Zoom. And I think that that's a critical thing to be thinking about. How do you make your virtual event as in-person in and live feeling as possible, right? And when you do a live event, how do you give people such incredible value? Maybe you extend it a little bit longer. Maybe you give them more time to connect in person because you're just not going to do it as often. So these are all things that kind of percolate in my mind as I'm as I'm thinking about the, the juggling act you're trying to do between the two pieces. So Sid, I hope I gave you enough time to, to process what everybody shared. Um, you did. Tell us where your thoughts are at the moment. Sure, so so uh, first of all, I, I love what you just both, actually I, I truly appreciate all of the feedback. And uh, you know, what Naftali just mentioned was, uh, you know, that, that feeling to give that, you know, value on the virtual side so uh, I use a specific, I, do, I actually have hosted one event on Zoom. The rest of my events are on a different platform. I'm not really a big fan of the breakout concept of Zoom because there's a lot of administrative tasks tied to it. And so I cre I, I did a lot of research early on. And so, uh, you know, my, my most recent event that I had, it was a, a hotel lobby room design. 
uh, with tables in it, and people could walk around the room, uh, walk around the tables in different breakouts on their own. I encourage any of the audience, including uh, you three, to attend my June 26 next week's uh, free networking event to give it a try to see exactly that feel on virtual side. But what I am doing is in July, I'm uh, I'm already talking with a uh, an uh, what do you call it with a restaurant to see how I can go and create a social distance limit type of in-person event. I'm in process of doing that. And then also in July, of course, I'm not going to stop the virtual yet. So I want to see now, compare them side by side to see, hey, is it coming back? Is in-person coming back for real? And how that impact is going to be. And then also I have to now start thinking about documentation. I got to start thinking about, um, you know, making sure we have uh, masks and gloves and hand sanitizer and all the other fun things when I host these events. Now, all of these interesting things start coming up because if somebody or one individual had it or whatever the scenario is and they come, it creates a huge fear factor, right? So I also have to limit the capacity. So all of these small things are in play, but the first thing is just making sure the venue feels comfortable of even doing something like that. That's another big challenge right now. Well, you hit on something, Sid, which I think is very important, and that is one of the benefits of a mastermind is expanding people's networks. So obviously we're talking about networking now like directly, but even indirectly. Let's say we're having a conversation now about sales instead of networking, although the two, of course, are related. So I might hear a problem you have and say, you know what, Sid, I want you to talk to so-and-so because that person you know, is really great at that and that person could answer your question even more so than let's say everybody here on the call or be an added value person, that kind of idea. So this idea that you're inviting us, first of all, I appreciate it. The fact that it's on a Friday, I guess it would depend on the time of day. Um, right. Dictate, uh, you know, because we, the rest of us observe the Sabbath with sundown and certain other restrictions there. Um, but the idea that you're having events that we could potentially attend or that we could refer other people to come to your events, that's just another important but but side benefit of the of the mastermind. Thank you. Yep. So are we good? Are we good as far as the challenge that you brought? Anything else you wanted to unpack? No, not at the moment. I may have a million questions, but let's kind of keep it at this one for now. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Ashley, what are your thoughts? Well, oh, Barry, sorry. I was just going to ask, Sid, well, I guess what was the hesitation to begin with, with continuing with the virtual? Was it just, um, I mean, let me hear, what, what, was there a particular hesitation that you had? With, uh, with virtual, you said, or I'm sorry, repeat that again. Yeah, with continuing with virtual, you know, you were talking about you just go back to in-person and drop the virtual. So uh, was the concern only a matter of the time, you know, the, the, the time consumption of, of, of running two kinds of events or was, was there another, was there another concern? So there, there's a couple of concerns, at least from my mindset. One, the first one really I see. Okay. Yeah. I, now I, I guys experienced that like finishing sentence that you guys were experienced earlier with me. Uh, so what, what, uh, my biggest concern is if I, so I, I have the core, right? Has she said the core, and that's the core that I developed early on. And I, I completely understand that core. Now, the core, they want to follow Sid and the event and whatever it is. But now, if I do an in-person event and then a virtual event, and then it, it's too much for that core. But then mm -hmm. I also built in the last three months an entire huge like group of people that never even knew who Switch Events was. And so I have to consider those. So that's really a big challenge because how can you make sure the core doesn't get overwhelmed? But at the same time, you also don't want to lose the people that have already committed to the brand in the last three months. And that's, that is that uh, is for an event host and somebody who actually understands networking and cares for it. I have to consider all those factors. Are you using one list to distribute all of your content or are you splitting them up between the two kinds of events that you hosted? So at the moment, because everything is virtual, everything is kind of merged into one. And then I'm also in thoughts of how to organize it. But then there are people that I know that have literally dropped off and have not attended any virtual. And I'll still kind of keep them following up and just let them know that, hey, this is where we're at. But uh, but yeah, for now, it's all merged into one list because I'm only virtual right now. You know? So if there is a way for you to tease out your list, that might be a strategy to consider. Because yep. this way, the people who only want to do the live events 
you know, can be kept abreast of what's going on. You, you drop in a line here and there, but you tell them we're not doing anything live yet because of the pandemic. And then when we do, this is how we're planning on doing it. What would make you most comfortable? Sort of like unpacking it with them in that kind of um, and then the and then the virtual group gets their own you know messaging because obviously you're doing a lot of programming for them, and the and the live group can have the option of joining the virtual group list, so they can be you know they can get both if they want to, and if it's too much for them they can unsubscribe, but this way they don't unsubscribe from your other list as well. That would be something That's, I would consider. That is a very very good good suggestion. I appreciate that. And you can oh, tag, you can tag on MailChimp. You could, I don't know what you're using. Yeah, I use MailChimp. I use yeah. the tag as well. And frankly, I don't do it. I have somebody else who does that kind of work okay. for me. Um, so she would know much better. I, and I can ask for you if you need, but that's a way that people do it that I think allows them to, either they create separate lists and you could have people opt in based on what you're doing. I think every event you do, there should be an opt-in option, yep. you know? And, um, and by the way, I mean, and this may sound, this is totally not your question. So forgive me for, for being presumptuous here. Um, but if you have enough that you have learned, and I don't know, maybe Hesh, you want to go in on co-authorship of this, but if you guys have learned enough about how to run successful virtual events in a pandemic type environment, and you wanted to create some kind of ebook or some kind of like white paper or some kind of something that people could download for free from your website, Number one, it's a value add. Number two, it can get them to join your lists, the respective ones you wanted to build. It's just like something that probably shouldn't take very long to put together in theory, especially if you work together on it. Um, and then you both could use it to build your respective lists. It's just like I said, I'm not saying you have to do it, but it's another way by which to develop the interest. You become somewhat of a thought leader. Other people who are interested in doing this who have not yet jumped into the water would see you as somebody to look up to. And frankly, who knows, maybe you could do a live event for people wanting to do virtual events down the road because you already have traction. You've already built a list. You've done both personal and live. You're sort of, you're grappling, the two of you in particular are grappling with issues that are common, but I think a lot of people out there are dealing with something similar. And if you put content out there that people are receptive to, not only could it build your list, but it may be able to build your sense of authority in that community. And who knows, maybe it could leverage you in other ways. I like the idea. I'm always trying to think a little bit, you know, further. So out. I, I have a, I have a book coming out um, and it's tied to networking and there's a chapter designated to virtual events. I may pull some data out of that and move, move, move that into a, like a brief ebook. I like your idea. Yeah, that would be great. And of course, you could also you could also link up your real book in the ebook. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. Click on this and it brings them to the Amazon page or wherever you're wherever yeah. you're selling it. And to book Sid Live, you know, you got you got that link too. So uh it brings people there. Heshi, I, I know I kind of threw you in without without really asking you. Did you want to comment further on that? Yeah, I want to just add to that. I, I had something interesting to say that. In the beginning, our last in-person event was in the beginning of March, and things are already starting. You know, the, 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 in in Europe, things were getting interesting there, and it was already the foreboding this is coming. And but we didn't realize that, that it would last this long, and we'd have to have the next event virtual. But the question was, should I make the next event virtual? Should we just push it off a month? You know, once we see that people aren't meeting up in person. So that's that's that was the decision we had to make in 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 in, begin, in the end of March for our April event. And we decided, let's do a virtual for one month. We'll try it out. I didn't know what I was doing. I'm familiar with Zoom. I've done Zoom many times. We actually, uh, Barry was our first virtual presenter, Barry, Barry and Chaim Book. And they, they gave a very good presentation on what employers and employees need to know during uh, during coronavirus. And and we didn't have a big crowd. We didn't have, we had maybe what was it, 25 people there, um, much less than our, than our typical group. Uh, which which has been like 80, 85, you know, the, the last group before that. But the program was great, and everybody enjoyed I got such good pe feedback from that. You guys are great, yeah, Barry. You and you and Chaim were, were really great. And uh, Thank you. And that gave me, that gave me the, the courage. I, I, don't, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know how to – I've never run a virtual event before. But I was forced because of the times, I, you know. I was either disband the group, furlough things until things get back together. But I realized if – we keep pushing this off. We're going to lose the group. It's going to kind of fizzle out. Let's keep it going virtually. I didn't know what I was doing, but I kind of tried it out, and we had a very good program. And because Barry, because you and Chaim did such a good job, everybody liked it. We said, let's do this again next month. Um, we tried different formats and different things, 
you know, steadily every month the, the, the population has been growing. So again, I, so I, I can't even tell you from like in the beginning, I, I, I've never run a virtual event before, but doing it and, and, and growing from this is really the, the experience. And, and, and you see, Naftali, from the last time we did it, I never used a, a, a breakout room before. Now it came to task, let's try the breakout room. We couldn't even get it working. But on the other hand, we kind of always had like our own virtual breakout room and for all the people who stand in the end, we accomplished that. And now we're working for the next time to get the breakout room you know, working properly, and we're going to have somebody who's going to organize different people for different breakout rooms. So it's experience. It's all about working from experience and, and kind of sometimes things messed up, as you saw firsthand at our previous event with the breakout rooms. But you know what? At the end of the day, we grow from that, we learn from that, and we make things better because of that. And that's what it's all about. So right. I'm not quite. Which is exactly a book why, yet. Yeah, that's exactly why I think you guys should do this because you're both kind of like feeling it out. There's no, there is no playbook. Right, you you're you're writing the playbook as it goes, and so right, that, exactly. that's right, right. I was going to say, thank you very much for the kind words, Heshi. You know, you say you weren't sure you've never run a virtual event. No one ever attended a virtual event, so there was nothing right. to go off of. People could come after like well, the last one I was at was was better. No one was at the last one, so you know, you guys are, are the pioneers. Just go for it. Yeah. You know, you know more than anyone, so do it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay, so Hashi, I've given you some time to ponder. Um, let us know if you want to if you want to put a, a a challenge to the group, or if you'd like for us to pivot. Why don't you pivot? Okay, all good. So before I do, <clears throat> I should have circled back to Sid first. At this point, are you are we good? Yeah, we're good. Thank okay, you. Fantastic. Did everybody get a chance to take a look at that worksheet that I that I shared with you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so. The way that I, excuse me, the way that I run a mastermind typically is we'll do like an introductory piece, you know, the first week, of course, getting to know each other, each week sort of a check-in, then some type of planned learning component based on the interests of the group, which is based on survey and, and, and conversation and things like that. And then I pivot to the, to the hot seat. That's usually how it works. And the hot seat is a rotational thing. So if this was a group that was continuing you know, Barry was actually on a previous one, Sid did this week, Heshi would do a different one, that kind of thing. And of course, as the group uh, is expanded, because usually it's a little bit larger than this, we'd have other folks who would bring their challenges to the group for feedback, et cetera. Um, I chose this worksheet, first of all, because I thought it was a good standalone exercise. It doesn't require, you know, working together for weeks on end in order to unpack it. Like, for example, with the other group, we're working on feedback. I'm not going to just do it once and never touch it again. You know, there's a lot of learning involved with it. But from a, a, a from a visioning and a strategic standpoint, I think this happens to be a very valuable exercise because who knows what the next three months are going to look like. You know, if we would be having right. this conversation, let's go back three months here. I guess at the end of at the end of at the end of March, you know, I don't know that anyone would even have the the bandwidth to to attempt this or the, the ability to do so. We'd all be looking online for masks and sanitizer and toilet paper. So we wouldn't even be able to sit down and, and, and jot this down. But now we have a little bit more to work with. And I, I think that if, as we envision the next three months, obviously with a focus on our business, but not exclusively so because business and personal go together, especially if each of us are either solopreneurs or we're doing things that are not necessarily corporate or company related. So I think that the two go hand in hand. The more that I'm in tune with who I am as a person, the more I'm in tune with you know, how I'm going to amplify my own impact and my own quality of life, typically speaking, that's going to have a positive effect on the work that I do. And I'm going to attract, by believing in the law of attraction, I'm going to attract the right people to me and to my work. So um, you know, I'm happy to kind of unpack a little bit of what I did since I did do the exercise in advance. Does everybody have a copy? Can you send me a new co a copy? Can you look at the link, can you look at the link of the message on LinkedIn? Um, it should be there. If Are you able to ask it, Ashley? If not, I will send it to you. I'm just not sure. I need to want to jump jump in there otherwise. Let me know if you can. I can do I'll, uh, okay. So while you're doing that, you'll see that the sheet is divided into five components. The first one is the longest, right? How do I want my life to be three months from now? Okay, so I'm sort of visioning. You know, sometimes if you try to vision too far, it becomes difficult for you to to really 
you know, 10 years down the road, I want to own this kind of house. I want to have these kinds of cars. I want to have this and the other. It's sometimes so far out there that it's hard for us to really take action around it in a meaningful and purposeful sense. So there's something nice about doing a 30, a three month window where it, it's a little bit beyond where I am today. It's kind of like stretching me just beyond my current reality and maybe my comfort zone. It gives me something to aspire to, but it's doable because it's it's like it's close enough to where I am today that I feel motivated to take action. Right. One of the right. biggest, awesome. one of the biggest demotivators for us, of course, is it's beyond me. So I I do nothing. I'm pausing, Hashi, because I it sounded like you wanted to say something, but please say it again. I was I was just saying how like there's so many unknowns going on right now. Will the kids be back in school? Will our work get to, you know, will we be, will everybody be back to work in, in a few months? So a short time frame with these crazy times is, is I think also very appropriate. Yeah, which is what drew me to it. So um, that was the idea in front of me. And I feel like if we, I'd like to highlight three parts of the sheet, if I may. The first one, of course, is important because the, again, the more that you can move the needle in your personal and professional life, the better you know, who am I? And kind of like envisioning the process. Um, I did, I participated in a mastermind where I wrote a purpose statement every day. And it was really focused primarily on the financials, right? How much am I going to earn between now and a specific date? And that will come to me. It's, it's, it's using the thinking and, and the language, if you will, of think and grow rich of Napoleon Hill. Um, but so, so you have an idea of where you are right now, what your revenue is, what your finances are. You want to obviously expand beyond that. And you want to do so in a way that will, like I said, will motivate you. So looking through the first parts, I think are relatively straightforward. Um, the third one, in order to achieve what I want to achieve, what do I need to become? Right? In other words, you don't get something for nothing. Everything in life comes because of an exchange. So for me to get more revenue, that means I'm providing more service or higher quality service or better products or more products. I'm doing something in exchange for what I'm getting. It's not just here, go ahead and give me whatever you want because, you know, um, the government is giving out free money. So just give me a little bit more of it. It's got to be, it's typically speaking, it's got to be earned. So thinking about who you need to become. Okay. And then the last one in particular is having a theme. Right, having something. So I wrote, for example, for myself, my theme is to build my platform and amplify my impact. And you guys are all talking about it. So I think we share a lot of the same thematic interests here, right? We want to continue. I want to continue. I feel like my content is good, but I don't feel that I necessarily get enough interaction with it. And I'd like to be able to increase that. And I feel that with more interaction on my content, as well as, you know, in conversation that stems from that content, I could then be a real resource for people who are looking for my coaching services or the things that I provide. And as an introvert, I like to have platforms like this because it allows, it helps me do some heavy lifting that I may not choose to do on my own because it's not as natural or comfortable or as enjoyable for me to just pick up the phone and start, Sid, forgive the Yiddish, start schmoozing, right? So, so it, it creates a different way by which to do that. And I have to think about what do I need to become in order to achieve the outcomes that I want, right? So it's not just I kind of wish for it. I have to be a different person. And my, the, what I identified primarily is I have to be more giving oriented. And by the way, that starts with me at home. I realize that, you know, in this pandemic, I think, I've, I don't know what everybody's situation is, but at home, it can be a little bit stressful also. Everybody being on top of each other, not having the same outlets and things like that. So for me, it was about creating a more positive space at home, giving more, not being necessarily so self-driven with work and other responsibilities, and simultaneously leveraging that giving to hopefully draw and attract people my way. That's kind of how my sheet unpacked without going into every line by line. So um, I don't know if you want to ask any questions, comment. I want to give you an opportunity to, to interact with this a little bit. Any thoughts on this, questions, comments? The floor is yours. So one thing I'll add to this worksheet that I really do like is that one, it creates a shorter span, uh, being that 
beyond the corona and beyond everything, uh, one thing that my mentors are teaching me is that, you know, when you're trying to create some level of achievement, you need to really narrow down exactly what is it that you need to achieve. And so the concept of short-term window to create some type of a major change and also what's the theme behind it? What are you trying to actually achieve? So this actually worksheet, funny enough, this is a lot of things that I normally do and think about, but it really condenses it down into a really uh, a format that makes sense. So a uh, wonderful idea, by the way, wonderful it, idea. It's not my sheet as you can see, um, but there's a lot of content out there that really does help us focus. Would you be willing to share your theme, Sid? Yeah, so it's, um, you know, uh, one of the things that my theme, you know, my my website, everything that you see on Network with Sid, the brand itself, is that, you know, being able to connect people to achieve their dreams and goals and how to actually make that happen during a time like COVID, during this pandemic, during whatever that thing it might be a financial crisis. COVID will be done and a financial crisis will come up or something else will be there. But how can I make that happen? That's the overall theme. But now when I narrow it down, how can I make it happen during this window, right? How can I happen during a virtual events? How can I do it with this and, and so forth? So that's why, you know, the book that's coming out, that's going to be part of it, right? The, 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 the speaking engagements I'm talking about, trying to help people out, getting them active, giving them thinking. You know, I post two to three times a day on LinkedIn, giving people ideas and things of that nature. That's all part of that, helping people connect to get their dreams and goals aligned. Beautiful. And the coach in me would then say to you, let's get this into a smart goal, right? Let's, let's, let's quantify this in a way where you've got some metrics that you're working towards. Yeah. Are you familiar with smart goals? Not the term, but what you had mentioned about the metrics. Yes. Okay. So smart is an acronym. Uh, there are a few different variations of it, although the SM piece are typically standard. It's the ART that tends to vary a little bit, but at its core, it's specific, measurable, achievable or attainable, relevant, and time-bound. So specific is what specifically, it's like the who, what, where, when of the of the goal, right? So I said, will, let's just say, for example, post three times a day on LinkedIn. Let's say that's your, your behavior, or you want to um, create X number of, of events, or you want to do something else that's a measurable, that's the measurable piece of it. So, so we've got both of those pieces now in place. So for the next, let's say, three days or the next three weeks or three months, I will um, post three times on LinkedIn each day, right, with content that not only uh, informs people but also creates a connection. I will tag one person, let's say, every day or I'll, I'll write up a recommendation once a week. Whatever those behaviors are that further your theme and further your, your goal, Okay, you want to make sure it's attainable. So it's something that has to be within your, your locus of control and something that you could reach. Otherwise, it'll demotivate you and you'll stop. Okay, relevant means that it's going to improve your business or improve your mission or model in some kind of way. It's, it's, it's congruent, it's relevant, it's something that, that ties to your bigger uh, aspirations here. And as we already talked about, it's time bound. So that means I can measure did I post three times a day for the last three months, I can go on the calendar and literally look back or go into my feed and literally look back and do it each time. Okay. I don't know if somebody wants to, to respond to David there who just uh, chatted a, a hello for us. I know he wanted to be on the call, but couldn't. So I'll have to see if I can, if I can respond to him. But anyway, uh, Sid, does that make sense? Totally makes sense. Cool. Okay. So, um, Anyone else, any thoughts on the sheet as, as, a, as a tool or a resource? Barry, can you see yourself using it in some way? Um, yeah, it, 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 it'll take some thought. Um, yes, it's definitely a powerful tool. Um, it, it'll take some work. It's interesting, by the way, um, I was listening to Nir Ayal. I don't know if you know what that is. He's the author of Indistractable, and he's going to be on my podcast soon. Um, so he talks about, among other things, what's called an identity pact. If you identify, let's say, I'll use, I'll use the majority in this room here, Orthodox Jewish, right? So by definition, your identification means you do or do not do certain things. Let's just use an example that's well-known, don't eat pork. 
Okay. So it's part of who you are. It's like being a vegetarian. You don't eat meat. It's just your identity. When you identify in a certain way, by definition, your behaviors will follow suit. Okay. Now, the reason I mention this is because this is a great tool to reorient your identification, reorient who am I, right? What are my behaviors? What am I looking to become? And I write it in present form. But instead of writing it as the actions that I do, write it as the person I have become. So instead of saying that you are a, you know, I vote, you say, I am a voter. And research is actually very clear that people who identify as, as owning the characteristic as opposed to performing the action are likelier to take that action on a regular basis. So I'll use a mundane example. I work out as often, you know, within reason, but I work out almost every single day. Part of it is because I identify with my teenage self who was into exercise. And one might say that I was buff back in the day, right? So I don't want to lose that identity completely. So I work out and I try to stay at least within some realm of decent shape, right? Because that's who I am. Tony Robbins talks about this. So when you identify as a giver, you identify, Sid, as a connector, you identify Barry as um, a service provider at the highest level, right? So what does that mean in practical terms? What does that identification demand of you? And therefore, it's kind of like, I don't know if you remember those commercials from back in the day. Everyone's here is a bit of a different age. But when I was growing up, there were those Dunkin' Donuts commercials, Time to Make the Donuts. You ever see that one? Mm-hmm. Okay, so that was that was like an identity. I am the guy who makes sure that people have fresh donuts every single day. So no matter what, at four o'clock, I'm getting up. It pushes you through when you have that resistance because we all have it. So I don't want to work out, but I, I'm the buff guy. I got to work out, right? I don't want to study, but I, I want to finish. I have a, a goal to finish a certain amount of learning, right? I have to study. I don't want to get up and do another networking event, but I'm the connector. I better show up, right? That kind of idea. So the more that we could identify with a reality that defines us for who we are and frankly call ourselves that to other people, it creates a level of accountability because we're usually very, very good at, it, at allowing ourselves out of things, but we're not very good at letting other people out, right? Mm -hmm. So if, with prayer service, for example, to use an example that, that may be relevant here in this group, right? If I'm late, I can justify it a thousand and one ways, but if the other guy shows up late, I'm immediately judging him right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, we're always going to be easier to let ourselves off the hook. That's why we need to create more and more accountability, which is another reason a mastermind can be so powerful because we're creating accountability. Now, if we had another session, Sid, you'd be coming back on the call next week and I'd be saying, okay, Sid, tell us your progress, right? Have you have you've moved the needle since the last time? And what are you committing to over the next series of weeks? So it's a lot harder to get out of it because Barry doesn't let people off so easy. I don't know if you know that about him, but I'm uh, just, just kidding. But that's really what this is all about. That's really what this is all about. So I see that we're, we've hit 12 and, um, and I want to be good on everybody's time. So thank you very, very much for being with us. Um, I hope that this was useful. And I would love to see if you want to complete the, char the chart like I did, kind of scribble your stuff and you want to send it over my way just to create a little more accountability for yourself. You're welcome to do so. No requirement there. And uh, I'll be in touch with you, you know, to see if, if you'd like to um, um, unpack and explore what continuing in this type of way may look like. So again, thank you all for those of you who are Sabbath observers, wishing you a, uh, a wonderful Shabbos and a great weekend. And uh, thank you all for being here. Sid, I'd like to connect thank with you. you. I, I connected online. We should definitely connect and, and, and uh, you know, we can discuss networking ideas together. Happy, happy to do so. Uh, you know, we'll catch up on LinkedIn. Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Great Bye -bye. to meet. Very, very go ahead. Thank you.